Warning, this video may contain spoilers for late parts in the game. If you plan on playing this at some point, turn back now. You have been warned. CR back with another top 10. If you don't know who Humongous Entertainment is, I won't blame you at all. I'm surprised I found these hidden gems by happenstance back when Sam's Club used to sell games, let alone CD-ROM games. You might have seen me stream them on Twitch, or maybe these names will ring a couple bells. Freddy Fish, Putt Putt, Pajama Sam, and Spy Fox. Of course, they had a couple other games that they made, but I've never played them, and I think I'm good with that. As the time I've spent with these games has always been good, I have definite fond memories playing to each series, though upon playing them recently, I've found frustration in some. Generally, these are what you'd call kids' first point-and-click adventures, and they expanded my thirst for games as a kid. But my craze for CD-ROM games sadly didn't last all that long. Well, enough talking about them, let's get into the list and show you a bit more about the games. So, when I get to each series, I'll explain a little bit. Generally, none of the worlds are connected, though there are like toys and stuff of characters in each world. This world is Putt-Putt, a living car in a world with other living cars. This is probably the weirdest game on this list, and honestly that's saying something, as Putt-Putt gets launched to the moon where aliens have made a home and has to do a bunch of random shenanigans to find his way back home. This game and the next one are the ones that I had the most trouble with, even though I hadn't played this one until I was an adult, I still had a bit of trouble to figure out what I was supposed to actually do to get started, but I eventually got there. A decent game, but 10 on this list for a reason. When I was a kid, I remembered this to be up in my top 5 of all these games, but playing as an adult, it was a much different story. It took me like a whole 30 minutes to figure out what I was supposed to do, to really start going, and I just didn't have a super amount of fun with it like I remembered. Still, it was an interesting concept as I think it was one of the first times I had any media involving time travel being like 4 or 5, I hadn't really seen Back to the Future or anything. I can definitely see why I had fun and I had a lot more fun with this than I did when he went to the moon. This is a definite fun game, kind of short, but it doesn't overstay its welcome either. I'm not a huge fan of the Freddy Fish series, but this one is definitely good and beats out some of the putt-putt games that came before it. A simple story of a supposed ghost haunting Freddy and Luther's school, stealing the kids' toys with Freddy having to solve the mystery. In this world, humans and fish coexist like real life. I think as there's ships and stuff at the bottom of the ocean as old remnants, while the fish can talk and stuff. Again, a cool little game. This is where the games start to get particularly good on this list, at least through adult eyes. A, a fun little game where you need to find and help zoo animals who have gotten themselves trapped before the zoo opens with a nice little tune at the beginning that I skip now due to just how often I booted this game up to play as a kid. There's a couple fun mini games to do as well, but one thing that always got me as a kid is a food stand at the entrance of the zoo where they give you an unlimited amount of these incredibly tasty looking fries that I desperately wish were real, as well as a cup of hot chocolate that always makes me want a cup of. This is another game that was on the top of the list, but was just slightly not as fun as I remembered, as I had actually lost the CD for the game after only playing it like once or twice, so I had been eager to find a way to play it for a while. When I did, I definitely still had fun, but my opinion changed on it a little as some of the other games further on this list went up higher. Let me explain who Pajama Sam is in the first place. 
I'm pretty sure he's the human side of the games, as his deal with fear of stuff and general learning type things, less abstract and a little more direct, but the way he goes about learning is completely abstract and wild. The game essentially has you fix a giant weather machine as Sam messes everything up in the first place, giving thunder and lightning actual bodies being people just like Sam. Now, the Spy Fox games are just pure fun, with no real lesson being learned and is more of a spy thriller type thing. A kid's James Bond. This game is essentially furry central though, I'm not really into any of that stuff. I just like the characters, like I like the Sonic series, as this is a game that has anthropomorphic animals, with the main character being, you guessed it, Spy Fox, as you do various things to thwart the villain, which I think every game has two endings, one where you capture the bad guy, and one where if you mess up, they get away, which was my first experience with multiple endings, which was always cool, especially when I later read the Cuckoo Clock of Doom Goosebumps book. The plot of this game has you capture Billy the Goat, who had wanted to frame cows for making bad milk. As you can see, this game has a lot of puns, and is probably one of the reasons I like puns so much, even today. This game is absolutely fantastic. I love it to pieces, but there are three more that I love even more. Plot involves a Napoleon knockoff being an actual little bug who had been bullied all his life because of his size and not being able to go on rides at the fair that happens every year. His whole plan is rather vicious for a kid's game, as he installs an art piece in the middle of the fair being a giant metal dog, which turns out to be a robot, and with every person that enters through the turnstiles, it revs up the key on its back, which when it hits one million people, it will be unleashed upon the world, crushing everything and everyone. A rather short-sighted plan, but eh, it's a kid's game. Still ridiculously fun. Now, this holds a special place in my heart, being the first game in the humongous entertainment library that I ever played. It helped me be less afraid of the dark when I was a kid, and might be why I like scary movies nowadays, weirdly enough. The story is just about Pajama Sam being afraid of the dark. Thinking there's an evil named Darkness in his closet like his comic books, he goes inside, becoming trapped inside and falling into a creepy world that's perpetually trapped in nighttime. As he explores further, some evil trees take his equipment that he was going to use to defeat Darkness, and the main goal is to find it and to confront him. The quest to find your stuff is actually really fun, with a side portion to find all your socks hidden throughout most, if not all, screens of the game. Just a fun, grand old time. Now, this is my all-time favorite Pajama Sam game, and probably the one I have played the most. General plot is just Sam hearing some noises in his pantry, which upon investigation, sends him to a land all about food groups. The food groups are about to start a war as the delegates haven't showed up to a meeting for a declaration of peace because they've gotten trapped on their way to the meeting in one way or the other. This is fun mostly to the fact of the way you solve the puzzles being pretty interesting and while I haven't explained yet, I think all the games have multiple variations when starting up, needing you to do different things each time you play the game. They all lead to generally the same outcome, but in different ways, which is why I played them so much. I think there's only two versions, but I don't really know. This game has an excellent extra little thing as you go along, like Pajama Sam 1 needing to collect box tops which will net Sam a Pajama Sam action figure. You never really get to mess around with it or anything, but it feels nice to get Sam something cool by the end of the game. Now for my favorite humongous entertainment game, and my favorite Spy Fox game, Operation Ozone. The final game in the series has Fox stop a scheme from a poodle who is kind of maniacally insane, wanting to use a giant aerosol spray that she created in space to partially kill the ozone layer so the sun heats up the world so she can sell sunscreen and get rich. 
Everything about this game is a straight joy to play through, and I love every second of it. Bringing back recurring characters, and it all ends as she goes to her base on the moon, getting through her security and catching her, which, like the other games, is a great finale to the series, with some fun puzzle solving actually needing to expend a little extra brain power for this one, but it's all worth it by the end. For the most part, these were my childhood games, as I wasn't very good at any Nintendo games that I played, generally. Getting stuck frustrating me and thinking that starting over would change something as it did in these games, not knowing it was futile, but these were probably the main reason why I continued to play video games, eventually being able to smarten up and understand them a little more. I grew to love them, becoming a piece of who I am. They will always be something to fall back on as some guilty pleasures, and I grew the day that I'd ever condemn them as nonsense as they taught me and helped me through a lot of struggles I had as a child, not to mention just being pure fun. Hope you enjoyed, and see you next video.